In this week's video, we will cover all the materials used for our DIY ceiling, as well as how to run wire for, install, and connect your puck lights. We will also briefly show you how we installed our fuses in our electrical system. I, I I want... Okay, my favorites right now are cherry. I'm kind of with Val. I like the more natural look, so we'll, we'll see between natural and cherry in the morning. All right, good night. We are going to first pre-stain our wood. Um, we're using pre-stain wood conditioner. We have to wait five to 15 minutes. It's looking nice, about to put the stain on. Alrighty, and that's our mixture. We have cherry, natural, and golden pecan. So tonight, we put on our polycrylic. It's looking pretty. Setting all of our boards up because we put on our second coat of poly after sanding it. The first time we sanded it, it was actually like surprisingly gritty. Mom told me that it actually opens the pores in the wood, releases the pulp. It's trying to breathe more or less, so the grain rises to the top of that polyurethane. But yeah, we're letting this second coat of polyurethane dry. I'm gonna determine if we want to put a third one on after sanding the second, or if we just want to leave two coats. We're gonna be putting in the ceiling pretty soon. What we mainly did today is got our nail bone. So this is going to be great for, for our tongue and groove, which is traditionally ceilings, but also whenever we put in our, oh, our, wall. our shiplap wall. Jeez, stuff that we'll see forever. So something we just found out, if we would have just started by mounting around our fan, nailing into the studs there. So if you had three in the center and you cut it flush and that was your roof, this would go over that and you'd be able to, oh, oops. you'd actually be able to screw in here because this isn't weight bearing because this is going to be screwed into your ceilings. I mean, that's perfect. Now we're going to have to do custom cuts here, but live and you're learning. Second supply of wood getting stained check it out we're starting to put them up we'll have these stained wiped uh polyurethane sanded polyurethane sanded polyurethane sanded three times but we do have to wait on stain for 24 hours but dang that color's nice we're back uh Hi, <laughs> it's a new day this is this is how far we got last night so plan for the day put in the flange fan flange fan 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 flange what we're gonna do is finish all this hopefully this is the finishing piece like you see up here we already have this one done we do not have that one done over there yet but basically what we're doing is we're just starting it with the saw to have it super smooth we're using these big guys i think they're actually hedge clippers but they work great not only for this but also for our frp for our showers about to put in our puck lights these are our dc wires coming through the roof which we did our hole saw through and we're gonna connect them. We're gonna use wire nuts because there's a lot of fibers that we can twist together. And Fallon has scored our wires that we've ran. This is our DC wire. What we're doing is basically ripping off this final sleeve or sheath to get down to our positive and negative DC wires. Then you use these wire strippers and you get the right number on there. This is 14 gauge, so I'm using the 14 to take off this insulation without hurting the wire. So you have to do it really carefully. And then we go ahead and attach the light, red to red, black to black. One thing to note for whenever you're stripping down to the positive and the negative, we were using 14 and we were actually cutting some of the fibers out of our wire. Val tried the 12, which is right below it. It was perfect because it gave it like a nice, nice little hug around it, squeezed it, but not too tight and pulled off what we wanted to pull off. I just want to point out that I could have <laughs> another seven inches on me and still not hit the ceiling. <laughs> we definitely have ample room, even me. I got an inch or two up there, so. These three lights, they're just made by this one cord. So basically what we did originally, and you'll probably see this in our other videos, um, these were loops that came through these two lights. We and snipped them. Oh, and then this one, although it's already in, it's just the end of the cord. When we're making a parallel connection, it's a little bit harder with these middle lights. You have to make a three-way connection instead of just like a simple red to red, black to black. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your two pieces of wire here, you're gonna take your two red sides, and then you'll take your, your red guy from the light, stick that right in there as well, and just get your wire nut, stick them nice and together, go ahead and twist. Electricity always takes the path of least resistance. So if you give it multiple paths, it'll take the one that it can flow from. That way, if one of those blows, instead of it blowing the entire series of lights, because it's in parallel, you will be able to identify which light is messed up. If you have them in parallel, the electricity has the ability to go through all of the lights while skipping the one that doesn't work because you still have the wire to wire connection. So if you've ever had that issue during Christmas and basically all of your lights have blown 
what we are doing is running them in parallel so that you can identify specifically, hey, this is the light where the issue occurred. Hopefully this is helpful to you guys. Fallon knew a lot more about the series in parallel because she paid attention in school. I did not. Fourth grade, Mrs. Myers class. Thanks, Mrs. Myers. Shout out, Mrs. Myers. Shout out, Mrs. Myers. Again, we are we are definitely not electricians. No, no, not electricians. <laughs> no. I'm sure at the end of the video we'll be able to show you if this actually worked or not. Then, yep. boom! Here we are installing the rest of our puck lights. Next, we installed our electrical system, including our Terra distribution panel, which is a DC fuse box and an AC breaker panel merged together. The green side you see us working on now was for wiring the DC components like our puck lights. We used ATC automotive fuses. All the materials that you see here will be linked below. It's about 11 p.m. on a Saturday night. We're getting a little wicked. For rating and sizing these fuses appropriately to your DC items, see what the amperage draw is and multiply that by 1.5 times. The puck light draw was so low, it was actually a quarter amp, that we ended up using the one, two, and three amp size fuses that you see here. These were the smallest that came with our package. All right, so we're gonna have a switch here, but right now our, our guy Joe's, <laughs> check it out! Look at that shit! I can't believe it! <laughs> I, I, I just I can't watch. believe it! So we After yesterday, going to get it checked out, seeing at least how our DC works, we haven't turned on any of these yet. I'll let Fowl do the honors. Go. So yesterday we didn't have a switch in here, right? So like if you put together the two wires, they would turn on, but hadn't put in a switch yet. Here's our first switch. Okay, so <coughs> turn on our master kill switch. Maybe. Okay. So those lights are on. This light, these lights are not on yet. The switch is in though. So here's the hot switch. Are ready? Yep. Watch. I don't know too much, but that's okay. Then check our phone. Nice!